When creating a new repository using the Git protocol, we're going to first initialize our local repository, our development area where we're creating our code as a local repository. And then we're going to also specify where this code is going to be stored in the Git repository, like say GitHub. For example, I have a project here. I'm calling it Matilda Docker. And inside of that is various files and folders that make up the project. So there's documentation files and source code files and so on. So to get started, I'm going to initialize this folder, Matilda Docker, as a local repository. So I'm starting essentially a new project. So now we have a bunch of Git files and stuff in here that will keep track of all the changes and how we're synchronized with the remote repository and so on. And those details are not super important, but just know that the .git folder is what contains all that information. So now we've initialized the local repository, but we haven't specified where are we going to push the project to, where are we going to put all these files? And looking at our notes here, next thing we're going to do is specify that remote repository. And it follows this syntax here with the git remote add origin. So in other words, we're going to add a remote origin. We need to have an account on our repository. I'm using GitHub, so I have a GitHub account. And I'm going to specify github.com as my repository. But you might be using Azure DevOps or some other Git repository. So if you're not using GitHub, you would just substitute the values accordingly. So here I'm going to put my GitHub username. And then I want to put the name of my project. And as it turns out, I'm just going to name it the same name as this folder here. And then the extension is .git. So again, referring back to the notes you'll see that this is going to be the address of the repository, your username, and then the name of your repository, .git. The name of your repository doesn't have to match the name of your project, but it seems like that is the convention. So now that we did that, we have a local place to keep our code, and we have a spot up on the repository to keep our code. And that's going to allow us to push and pull code back and forth. The third thing we're doing is we're adding the files. So by default, files are not included in your repository. They may exist on your local disk, but they're not targeted to be pushed up to the remote repository. You have to signal, you have to tell the Git protocol, you have to say, hey, I want to include these files in my project. And you don't want to include all files necessarily because you might have files that have sensitive information in them. You might have files that contain credentials, passwords, things like that. So you want to be careful about what you add. But in this particular case, I actually do want to add all the files and folders that are in my project because the way this project works, uh, it's all supposed to be pushed up to the repository. So I'm just going to say git add all instead of naming the individual files one by one, since in my case, I don't need to be so specific. All right, and then we're going to do a commit and a push. Now, a little bit of a note on the push. You need to have credentials in order to push code up to a remote repository. So using, again, GitHub as an example, you can get a API key in your profile on GitHub. Once you sign up for an account, you can just go to your profile, get the API key, and that would allow you to log in remotely. You can also use your GitHub username and password uh, as well. The reason you might end up using an API key is that you should be using two-factor authentication with your GitHub account. So you wouldn't be able to just use username and password alone. And definitely recommend you do that, in which case you would be using your API key as your password instead of your regular login password. All right, so let's get started with the commit and the push. So with the git commit, we'll do the git commit dash A, and then we're going to have the message. This is the message that 
people who are viewing the repository are going to see about these particular changes. So in this case, this is the initial commit. So I'll just put that, that it's the initial commit. But if I were to come back later and say, change uh, a login form or something, I could put a message in here saying I updated the login form. And every time you do a commit, you want to put a message that explains to the viewer what the difference is. Right. And what you'll see is, is that um, due to a combination of the git add and the git commit, we've now created these files here in the staging process. And these files are now ready. All these changes are ready to be pushed up to the remote repository. So they're staged on our local machine and ready to be um, pushed up. And that's what a commit is, is that you're saying, I am ready to make these changes. And the Git software is staging all those changes and putting them into a format that can be pushed up to the remote repository. Now, I haven't created my repository yet up on GitHub. And so we're going to pause here for a moment, and we're going to go ahead and create that repository. You could have done this in advance, and uh, most folks do, but uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the repository created. So over here on my GitHub account, I'm going to click on New Repository. And here in the repository name, that needs to match. So I'm going to copy this just to make sure I don't spell it wrong or something. And then I can paste that name in here. And it says, hey, that name's available. And I'm going to make it a public repository. And at this point, we can go ahead and just create the repository. So now that repository exists, it's empty, it doesn't have anything in it, but it's available up in GitHub. And again, if you're using Azure DevOps or something else, then you would need to have a repository ready. So we're gonna go ahead and do the git push up to that repo. And all those changes that were staged have now been pushed up. So let's go back over here and we'll click on our repository. And now you can see the different files that were staged over on the develop machine have now been replicated or pushed up to, in our case, GitHub. And the readme displays below and all the files are visible here. And you'll also notice that the message that we put into the commit is copied over into the message column. 